Testing, testing. Yeah. Okay, good. Hello, everybody. Who's there? Sunny? Nobody? Okay, I'm going to talk to myself. <laughs> it's actually, uh, this is like 70 ish episode, and I can remember my very first 80, 74 episode. Hi, everybody. My name is Norman Fang, and welcome to this uh, wonderful. Uh, for me, it's actually a uh, fall weather that we have. We actually have a nice rain yesterday, and you, I thought we never rain in Southern California, but it did rain. We have a really nice rain, and I'm so happy because. Uh, by the way, if you collect rainwater, do not collect the rainwater on your first rain, because those are going to be acid rain because all the pol pol uh, pollution in the air it can be washed off on your first rain and also if you do collect rainwater uh, make sure you test the pH it most likely those are going to be very acid uh, so I would not recommend to uh, collect rainwater on the first rain uh, I would do it on the second uh, second day uh, after the all the pollution all the bad air uh, w uh, was uh, rain on and but right now is uh, Southern California we can actually have rain wash all the dirt the dust been collect on the greenhouses uh, the this is a very general uh, overview but I'm going to emphasize on the plant physiology what really happened inside the plant when the, change, the season change then later on we're probably going to focus on another episode on one particular genus maybe on the, the novelty plant analysis the path and the dendrovian but this is I just get gathered all this plant here uh, about earlier today and I'm going to do start it from the how about do the cataria first okay uh, this one here, for example, this is the, your standard and cataria, okay. And you notice that the leaf is kind of, it's not as pretty, it's kind of yellowish. Well, this is actually grown outdoor in Southern California. The verse, the leaf color is going to be, when you go outdoor, you're going to have more light intensity. The leaf is going to be more yellowish green, and that's okay, versus the, uh, this is actually go in the greenhouse. They're a little bit more darker. They're prettier. Uh, I'm going to give this as an example. Okay, this is a a, a, a standard calorie and a flower outdoor. Uh, you know, consider how hot and dry we have in Southern California. Uh, so in the fall, and this is the BLC. So this is the type. It they're not as hardy to be outside in Southern California. So this is the time I'm actually will consider to put it in the greenhouse, in my intermediate house. And but before we put any orchid in the greenhouse, so many of you might be uh, summer your orchid outside, like in New Jersey, uh, outdoor, before you put them in. Uh, this is where I usually go inspect on every single plant. And this is the plant. I did not want to do it earlier because you notice that. This is the all suitable. And all suitable also have a potential of rotting. And this is the, the case. And this is nothing wrong with this. All, this is still a firm. But I, I noticed that it's really old. Like the, this is about seven years old. Uh, can you focus this, this point here? Because being outdoor, okay, and we do not spray fungicide, except the preventative diphysin. There's an insertion, okay a fungus here okay so this is the perfect example I'm gonna do some surgery see all this here so this is the case before you put them in because a lot of time these are the all suitable from five years ago okay they had done their purpose they they, they are become very old and so they do not have a nice uh, defense system so the most uh, remember, uh, I do not spray. Uh, we don't. We don't spray hardcore fungus right here. So the one that's going outdoor, 
is more subject to all the environmental issue. So this is the one, the perfect stage to cut them back all the way to the surface. Okay, even though this still had a green leaf, but I saw this impression, I don't like it because I, it's safer just to cut them off. Okay. Even this one here, I don't I do not like the discoloration. Okay, so I'm gonna turn all of them down. And then we discard them. And then what I usually like to do is the five cent. Okay. Some other way you can actually let it dry, but as a pre as a previous, that's a lot of fice and everybody need to have a fice and 20 solution. The concentrated, a drop, a drop, not diluted, but concentrated solution. Okay. And then after they dry, next day I will come in to give them the uh, two in one cakey paste. Okay. And then I will do the cakey paste with the cube tips. And they will snap, snap on, on the cut surface once they uh, the dry out. The, by doing so, uh, the fire sand will, uh, will disinfest because the suitable have potential of some kind of infection. So I do not want any of those uh, potential uh, fungi or even bacteria go into the rhizome. Once they get into this rhizome, they go every single suitable. Okay, so this this is the one perfect uh this is one that really need to be divided but not this year yes uh, there is a question about how do you seal the cut i do not seal the cut i do seal i must seal the cut with the fires and concentrated okay the the old version the, some people will do it uh you can do it uh like cinnamon powder some people in the old way were doing the the pruning uh, seal that when you put in the fruit tree don't do it that have petroleum in there the best way of in this particular case because I saw some old infection uh, is to is to use the five cent solution you see here it it show the sign of infection already so there's the fungi is inside the suitable so in this case and actually it's a very good practice just to use the five cents concentrator and i do it every couple of drop and that drop is going to disinfest killing anything it even kill virus protein fungi and bacteria so this is the best way and it's actually cheaper than to buy any fancy whatever the seal or cutting whatever whatever okay so is that is that answer your question okay so once so next day i will come in to uh do a q-tip and once they just dry then i will uh, snap the two in one cakey paste onto the uh, cut surface space what i'm doing that is to encourage more side shoot coming out because right now this is in flower i'm going to enjoy the flower but i'm not going to do any dividing or repotting because the winter is here and there's going to be short day long night so the plant is not going to be active going remember i when we did the previous podcast on the carrier you only repot when the plant is physiology are in their active uh, growing more so standard carrier is very light sensitive when it's short day long night they're going to go to kind of dormant they don't draw the leaf like how to see them but they're going to be slow down there's a lot of chemistry changes inside the plant so i'm going to leave it alone but this cut surface with a two in one cakey paste is going to help activate the new growth so by the time when i'm ready to divide the plant next spring with the, all the new shoot coming up there will be at least three division 
I can make out of this catalia, okay? And a lot of this, because catalia is a very, very uh, wide uh, range. And I just happened to, uh, here's another perfect one. I had to go to really look for some trouble maker. Okay, uh, can we see this one here? This is a, a very a perfect case of robin. Okay, and, and see the it probably have a, in, a, a when people are, when we are moving orchid, moving plant, uh, they might got this scar. Maybe you got got cut surface. So the there's a, some kind of fungi go inside. Okay, and this is cause this very sad. See the look at flower bud. Okay, uh, but it's not too late yet. When that happened, okay, then I, I just disinfect the, the cutting tool earlier. You want to cut as low as possible. Ouch. Gonna come out. And then, okay, and that's for the scar. And then the cut surface. That's just why I always, uh, we all have a, a tool box and the five cent, drop it again. And then I'm gonna put this this print, okay, into a isolation area. What that means is they're not gonna get water. So I'm gonna leave the print over there. And, huh? For how long? Uh, you're not going to water anything until you see, you see the new shoe coming out. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to do it again. Get the two in one cakey paste. Cakey paste had all the uh, very nice hormonal, uh, 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 hormonal regulation. They were induced, uh, in this point of view, they're going to induce more new shoe because have cytokine in there. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. You're not going to water the plant because they're in the moss anyway. I'm gonna leave it there and then until the new growth coming up. So isolation. If you if I don't remove them away from this my growing bench, for example, uh, they're gonna be a uh, staff could be all water then. Okay. Then we'll be get too much water and then you're gonna have even more possible rotting the whole plant. So the fall season, okay, okay. It's actually it's the time we also uh, really get, per get close and personal with our orchid, with your collection, okay? Whether, whether they are moving from outside to inside, or whether you, are in where you have a greenhouse, for example, uh, this is the time to do what we call the fall cleaning. Get, get rid of all the debris, uh, clean up the bench. That's what Jamie actually, on the other day, she actually take out all the orchid from her shell, right? And then she would uh, use fire and to disinfect the surface. You can do it can spray with alcohol, uh, whatever. Just don't use bleach. Uh, bleach is, is horrible. Uh, it was good for not for very long. And then a lot of the fall the catalia, this is, for example, no, this is a very, nothing wrong with this. This is a fall, uh, a spring bloomer. This is a, uh, I use this because it's a lot easier to handle the, than the big stander. Uh, a lot of use spring and fall catalia, the mini type, uh, intermediate type. Uh, see, we have so many plants. Uh, this is the time I really to uh, to clean up, and you see here. This is the spring. The fall is ready to flower. Okay, remember the new sheet always has this green sheet. This sheet is to protect the, the very tender, suitable inside. But the one from the spring, the sheet here had down its purpose to protect the suitable. So this is actually the time, good timing, to always remove this dry sheet. They've done the purpose. I wonder, you want to remove this because this is where a lot of time possible, the, might be a scale that actually hide this inside and then you cannot get to it. So this is actually good to clean up uh, if you had catalia under the light, okay, this is the time to thoroughly uh, make sure there's no scale, possible scale or anything underneath here. 
and but you do not want to touch any of this new sheet here because this is the one to protect the young suitable inside the young suitable inside is really very tender and juicy so this is actually good uh, a firewall for a lot of pests and uh, insect disease so uh, you do do not try do not don't uh, try not to have any kind of physical damage any of uh, the scar uh, have a hole have a have a, a possible or uh, the point of entry okay and this is why uh, I always say when you if you got orchid in shipping for mail order whether it's for me or anybody else I know there's a lot uh, there's a website uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff on the internet show you all kind of stuff for example, uh, I always one of the most often asked question is, do I, uh, they saw some show program that you had to repot all your orchid when you first receive. No, that's the worst thing you can do to your plant because the plant, well, first of all, they might have jet lag, for example. And then because of packing, shipping, they might possibly have, and the plant is shipping, they might rub in each other they might have an open wound when you start repotting them and watering them though those in the fungi can easily go through the wound or cut surface so this is why i always do not recommend when to repot orchid or what when you open your box don't just do not do anything i don't care who say what okay this is how it works okay if if you know, I do have a degree in horticulture, and, and uh, my philosophy is always less is more. Uh, why do why do you want to uh, transplant the plant when they have all the shipping from across the country and repotting right away? You are doing more damage to your plant. So this is why a uh, uh, good observation. So this is another case. It's actually uh, getting ready flower uh, how can you tell you can actually take this look under the sun when I look this under the sun I did not see any flower bud yet so that that, that, that tell me this is uh, it's going to be a, a probably late winter or spring bloomer so I if you you know we can't do this to every single print we have with a thousand of them uh, at home this is the time I would also take the time to clean the suitable and now we also try to tell our staff to do this before we ship okay sometimes they don't do it but we do this this is actually good okay so this is calorie okay so so we got the calorie out all, all, all the way see and a well, lot of time this is the calorie and it's in the moss do very healthy okay so this is very moist and the worst thing you can do for orchid at this stage these two stage stages is to water so remember now this is the fall season now so guess what day is getting shorter temperatures get day temperatures get lower unless you go in the house under the heat map and we get into that later uh, everything will be cooler so we I have a long <laughs> I have a long shirt today it's getting colder so the plant do not need as much water so that you the, remember to scale back scale back your watering versus the summertime especially the orchid in the moss okay you see here so this is going to be stay wet like this for another good two minimum two week and that's just good nothing wrong with it just less work for you so all right and how are we doing so far so we get a calorie out of the way so the overall regardless what kind of orchid genus you have slow down and really look observe your growing condition because everybody growing condition is different you could be in florida new mexico uh colorado uh 
you the one only know your environment and uh, even though it will go inside might be some people turn on their heater if their day temperature warmer some people keep their temperature cooler at 70 degree with the AC on even in the fall so if you had that low temperature they're gonna be dry out slower okay so water is the first thing that when I was work, uh, first got the job at the garden center or work at Dante Dendo everybody's job regardless how old how, what kind of degree you have is the watering the watering is the most important of any growing any plant with uh, an orchid house plant or anything and, and that's how you learn to observe the plant the plant that really going to respond and tell you what's going on so num lesson number one on the, on the, the fall now scale back the watering scale back the watering but still keep an eye on the smaller plant the bigger the bigger the plant whether it's bark or moss they're going to dry out slower the smaller the pot the 2.5 this is why you whether you go under light or in a greenhouse or outdoor try to group all your orchid by genus and then by the pot size that way all those in 2.5 inch and like, like for example Jamie have all those under light most of the 2.5 in the moss together in one layer or one section so those are the ones that will dry about the same time the worst situation is if you have mix of small one uh, 2.5 and 4 inch pot together so when you are watering the, the smaller pot dry out faster so when you water this guy and the, the water might spread onto the 4 inch pot for example in moss then, then this will be okay but the one in the 4 inch pot next door next next to it got over water so always separate them okay so doing okay okay so I'm going to uh, do the fan analysis the fan analysis the standard type okay I'm going to use the system for the standard type when we say novelty fan analysis and the standard type the novelty refer us the the summer blooming all this uh, uh, the summer bloomer and the standard type for example like the big white and this is the uh, Shuriana okay this is the time cut off all the spike uh, if you have the secondary spike uh, even a big flower cut them all down and get in and this is I'm going to do inspection the leaf is the root is okay uh, and this uh, size can be in here for another year next year so I'm going to leave it alone okay and if you are going in the house in the summertime remember I told you to move it away from the window the fan analysis in the winter time whether you are at, at the uh, New England uh, North Pacific Northwest in the house now you can put it closer to your window to get more light in the summertime we pull it, we remove away from the window but now light intensity is going to be lower uh, if you're in uh, Colorado for example the light is wonderful so it, but it's a, it's still, you can actually put it closer but in Colorado because you are, you are really high uh, or New Mexico the light intensity can be so strong so as long as you can get an arbitrary full morning sun but touch the leaf if a leaf feel like hot okay then you move away or give it some kind of shade if it's hot it's also give you indica indication my possible of burning the plant okay but when you get it more light remember they can they might dry out faster okay and that is for standard type the feeding is about the same uh, at my nursery I will use normal soaking food year round now you might another question have the issue uh, uh, one might ask is what happened when the winter time we don't dry out when there's a time that this week we do it every other week okay we feed it twice a week but the week of you need a fertilizer but the moss still wet that's okay you know what we do it as a the normal socket food is very very refined it's the plant actually can absorb to the 40s you still can foliar feeding 
on the leaf a little bit on so you don't have to soak the whole plant because the plant is still wet but the calendar says this this week is my feeding week spray on the foliage spray on the foliage and that's okay because as long as the plant receive light they do it for the synthesis and I can actually can use the extra help what you're doing right now is getting the plant ready the standard type usually will flower again put this one uh, they should be start spiking a, a, a very soon in about uh, in a month November December for the spring booming the novelty phalaenopsis pending on if you go in under light and you have a heat mat you can turn it on uh, on the minimum 65 night temperature and a 12 hour light the novelty phalaenopsis will keep blooming and you definitely need to feed them more and not cut them back okay so that's the full fan analysis and we uh, don't worry i'm going to have another segment maybe next week a specific on the fan analysis and then we, uh, we, co we cover the novelty and the standard and possible if we need to, need to repel them okay now before i forget oh uh, yeah this another catalytic uh this is why the label is important this is Catalina Perseveriana. Okay, uh, this is the uh, the reason I brought this up is uh, some people will say, "Well, Norman, I, I, it's too crowded," and but that's okay. This is going in the mass and still in the three-inch pot. But Perseveriana is a species; they flower in December, so this is the time you do not want any repotting, not even pot them up, just leave it alone. And I can show you it's so this is a nice thing about growing in the moss the plant like this if you grow in the bar it probably need a six inch pot but the moss always less is more and for catalia for a lot of orchid crowded better they're very dense so but I'm not gonna repot them until next spring and because the label I know the species Perseverina flower for Christmas so it's actually ready to flower so right now the, if you repot them right now or simply shift into a larger pot they won't like it because the first thing that the root want to do is to fill them up and they might forget the flower for you in the Christmas time so again all you have to do is just clean them up and this is why label is very important because label will tell you the identity of the plant and um, if you had you uh, if this one doesn't have a label and I might assume it, the way it looks like it I might oh this is possible a calorie Masiae and Masiae flower in March but this is Calaria Perseveriana the, the Christmas orchid so never lost your label and when you do but be an educated uh, cus orchid customer always ask for label and at the show I talked to the grower if a, a good grower a good true orchid vendor would know what they're talking about they won't be that last night this lady think that we Jamie have a disease plant uh, that's actually is a vendacious intergenetic we ringer started Jacantia had red in there so a lot of the orchid they have uh, when they have color they have pigmentation and they will have ring spot on that and so here we go how are we doing this multi type I love multi type Ma there's nothing really multi type uh, is is a wonderful you don't really don't do too much and we will do another seven on the pathipedium uh, the multi type for the green one always uh, the the green one always for a very peak in the summer term and the fall and the, the bottle type will be coming in as early as December so this is the time you do not want to repot any of your pathopedium uh, especially the bottle type because they are sitting the sitting the flower but and the multi type enjoy the flower and they are remember lady pathopedium do not have if the leaf is actually sometimes thinner than phalaenopsis so 
you always want to water them because multi type because they like arcanite. So they all we always grow them in Douglas the fur bark. Okay, so fur bark is going to dry out faster. So keep an eye on them. I usually put all the path and this are in bark, all the bark in the same area. So never let them dry out. Uh, Pathopedium have the root have hair. So once the root hair is dry out, uh, it's very hard to get them back. It's very different than the path of uh, analysis. So the path uh, Pathopedium in the winter time, if you're not sure whether to water or not, you know what, go ahead and water. It will not hurt because the, the root really uh, the hair really appreciate and it went they do not like to dry out because there's really not much area for them to store water okay so that is on um, the pathopedium all right and you feed in about the same too now i want to talk about the oh i talk about the dendrobium this came out of the way this is what happened i don't have a assistant <laughs> okay before we do the dendrobium how about Oncidium? Okay. A, a lot of Oncidium, you know, this is the, has been, that this is the Oncidium alliances, okay, in the inter, inter, intergenetic. My God, it's been flowered for over two months, okay, and it's getting tired and it's getting old. You know what? Do yourself a favor, cut them off, cut the spike off. A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to leave the flower want to leave the flower there no get them off as a cup flower because right if you don't cut it all the energy is going to stay on here but you what you really need to do is once you cut it this is the same crown. the energy we're going to push up to the new school can you see this here okay so that is going to give you the next flower for the fall for this coming spring so in the cut flower like this, put in a nice vase, it's going to lay cut, it will last at least minimum two weeks for you. And that way it will give you your plant a head start. The energy what is going to go to the next goal. And this is going to where they're going to have a next flower season. And remember, the suitable in the back will be Ringo, and that's okay. The new suitable always gonna be nice and plump. Just like when we get older, we got wrinkle, right? So the old suitable here, it could be yellow. And a lot of people think, oh, what? They always got really nervous when they see yellow leaf. That's okay, this is, this is the old leaf. You know, just to change the season. The tree change color and fall off. Orchid do that. And nothing, nothing to worry about is, okay, so that, it's a case for the oncidium in the genetic. Here's another case that should have cut off earlier, but depending on the genus, look at it. This is actually eager to put out a new spike. Ah, waha. Uh -huh. See this one here? So you're going to get a new, this is going to be coming up for the spring. So this is your Ansema alliances. What's the narrow fire cap? And uh, and then I'm gonna check the root. Voila. Okay. They just don't worry. They they got water yesterday uh, in my nursery. Usually, uh, all the plant got water before by by Friday. So so this is nice and wet and root is healthy. And the plant like this would be good for two weeks. I'm not gonna water anything. And we're gonna sit, sit on the side. Okay, so this is the Oncidium Alliance. And you still feed him the same. We still, uh, with the size we have, everything got, once a month, we do Fison. This is a preventative program. Fison solution uh, to water all your plants. And then we feed them every other week for those are new with us and then also make good use of your old toothbrush this is when what when you are cleaning the suitable okay uh next one will be the dendrobium yes can you make a 
Huh? Yes, and that I will get into the mega drive when we are on the uh, dendrobium too. Okay, the mega drive also that's a good uh, good statement. Uh, mega drive, for example, uh, remember I mentioned before in the winter the different inside the plant between summertime and the fall because the day length is going from. 14 hours, 16 hours a day, change into short day. So, so the plants are going from active vegetative season to winter. And so the short day, remember I told you inside the plant, in our body, we have male and, her, and female hormone. Plants also have male and female hormone. Male hormone is like oxygen. Oxygen is the type of hormone in plant. Uh, activate the vegetated growth season. So in the summertime, when it's a long day, warm day temperature and warm night, the oxygen, the male hormone increase. So you got a lot of leaf, a lot of growth. But when the winter comes, okay, and this is this is how when we do tissue culture, uh, when we regulate different stage of the media, or when we're doing cloning, we can actually add this Hormone, hormonal ratio to adjust and this is why <laughs> you know a true orchid nursery man really need to need to know this plant physiology uh, there's a lot of this so-called orchid uh, grower or orchid nurseryman they just buy plant and open the box and then sell and they do never understand what the plant is orchid is involved the genetic so nothing ev not everything had to be perfectly uh, wrinkle free or not everything had to be green because the lots of if when you get into a lot of intergenetic you really understand what species behind each plant and you can understand that so what happened right now is when we have short day long night the female hormone in plant the cytokinin will increase and oxygen will decrease okay so what phycin or what the megathrite does is the enzyme it's not forcing them to do anything. But when the plant ratio are changing, it will actually enhance that reproduction. So this is very crucial, especially in the winter time. When the time to do the mega dry, that's why the mega dry is for your application because the moss might be still wet. Or Everything is designed and tested for five years at my nursery. And I had you know, all the data had to convince me to try. So because okay, this is my livelihood. If I if I can trust this product and the enzyme on my livelihood, and now I can back up to it, it's wonderful. Because the the, the philosophy of this enzyme is applied to not just orchid. But can also, hey, cactus, any living, as long as it's not silk flower. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Alright, so yes, winter time, hey, I eat, look at it. Uh, Jamie said this shirt was big because I can't wait. We, we, ate, we eat three meals a day. Winter time, yes, they still need to feed them. Try it to yourself if you do, don't feed yourself for a day. <laughs> then do how to see how you feel but this is the time when the hormonal hormonal are, are changing inside the plant okay they want more cytokinin the female guess, guess what to get a flower ready okay if you don't have that's why a lot of time the what you think the, the mega dry and the fertilizer when you have the combination the optimum combination you really give in the plant a lot of this orchid grower that getting all the culture award because they really understand what the plant need at different stage. So when they are giving them the, the state right stage before they flower, the plant is going to respond to you next spring. Because a lot of time, by the time you say next spring, so oh, they got from the season. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed them. I'm gonna do it this now. No, it's a little too late because a lot of the time is preparation six months ago like right now 
So this is like why I think this is the, I always, winter time is always, the fall season is actually uh, the most critical for the spring boomer right now. Remember there's always, when I work at a uh, garden center, there's always a, a slogan called fall is for planting season. And this is true for orchid too. In the summertime, in the hot summer month, you don't want to touch them. You don't want to do much to repotting, especially that the novelty kind of analysis. This is their growing season. Excuse me. Okay, so not, uh, this is why I so e it's a lot easier. Just put it on your calendar. Make a dry 40 year application twice a month. So you mark every week. As long as you don't make a dry, I never like to mix any chemical together. I know even there are some pesticide. You know, I have a uh, license for a pesticide application. Applica I'm a pesticide uh, applicator in California. There are some chem uh, pesticide, for example, they can call temp mix. Never, ever. Because I always, I don't do the spraying anymore, but I subcontract for a pesticide operator to do the work for me. But he said, oh yeah, Norman, can we do the temp mix uh, for pesticide? Uh, I said, no. I'd rather pay you to come back next week. No, I break it down. This is this week. We're gonna try to pre, uh, spray for mini bud. Okay, if we have problem potential for scale, uh, another week we will take care of the, the problem for different insect, maybe aphid, for example. But I never want to mix the ten mix because Murphy's law when it always can happen because. Uh, the pH of the water in our city water it may be changed, may be different. Sometimes the uh, the the sticker uh, for the pesticide, and I just cannot take the risk. Uh, have a ten mix, and if any of the pesticide that uh, uh, chemical if a reaction, the plant is going to suffer. And this is on my li uh, livelihood. So it's, and for you, for example, you don't want to see your orchid suffer, please. Because a lot of times when the orchid has uh, got physical damage, I can recall when I was, uh, there's lots of stuff I would not use. Like for example, Ortin, or the Maritime, or some of the, back in the 80, uh, there, there, some of the stuff that was got, uh, plant got physical damage by the wrong pesticide, it takes three years. Even, be after, even before I graduate, three years later, the flowers still have deformed, deformed every year. And this is some uh, yellow catalia. Three years. So one wrong application by uh, another grower, another student, uh, he spray, uh, I think was was uh, maritime on the catalia, and the, the pollen media was bone dry. And then he also mixed the print sticker that he's doing something he's not supposed to do. And the print just absorbed too much of it. And, and that print sticker is not labeled for orchid. Okay, so the print got, so three years in a row, the yellow calorie all had deformed flower. From, look at the print, the print is perfectly okay. But for some reason, the damage was inside the cell level, deformed, three years in a row. So even before I graduated, they still do that. And I, I, don't, I think the plant eventually will cut the toss it because it's, it's just that bad. It's almost like cancer. It's, it's, and that can be really uh, terrible. Uh, how are we doing? So now we got the, how about dendrobium? Dendrobium, uh, a couple of weeks ago we do the the Australian type dendrobium. Uh, this is the type, remember, they're from Australia, the, t the twinkle type. Uh, this is the response to water, stay inside, and it's normal for the, uh, the Australian type dendrobium have, because it's from the very hot weather, and the weather is cooling off. So remember to cut back the water. They can take a lot, they can take over 100 degrees and cold, but they do not like to have wet feet. Do not have like wet feet. So this is the type also cut by the water and 
the, this is the case the water stay here but they did not got any infestation so I would just simply just pull this off and there is no disease infection so I you don't need to put five in here uh, for in, in this so but next watering when when you do the the your Monday five uh, of solution they will take care of it so all remember all your dendrobium whether it's Australian type depend on the genus okay this is the new growth okay and this will be flower again I love this type of dendrobium because this is the this is from this year this is from this spring grow this so this is actually uh, cut back the water and feed them do not forget to feed them I don't care if whether it's a, a if water them inside or actually foliar feeding is good because this nice suitable from this summer see here wow and it's actually setting the floor but I make sure when you spray make it dry make sure you hit all of them especially here uh, Jeff, uh, uh, can you see all this bump here, Roger? Yeah. See all this bump here is standing up, and even here. Okay, it's this is gonna be spectacular this coming spring. All this bump are standing up ready for flower. Okay, so when you spray make a dry, do spray them, but because the way the foliage spread it early enough you do not want to have water stay inside here and the cause the rotting okay so good air movement uh, this is perfect for under light uh, but under light you under light grower have usually have no problem because they usually put an extra fan here uh, in Florida it might have rain uh, but you should have no normal rain by by the fall but do watch out for the water collect in here okay for for the dendrobium and for the denfield for example this is the one of the, the one we did before uh another case oh my god this has been flowered so long uh cut it back uh i'm gonna give this because flower getting tired cut them out i'm gonna give this to jamie because the new girl, this is ready to flower for you. Voila. And this is what I like, like about dendrobium. Uh, where, and this has dendrobium found enough in the background. They love, they always in flower, getting a lot of sun. Okay. And and for this plant, for example, this, because they've been, a lot of this arrow root are dry out. Okay, they've done their purpose. You can actually show you, you can get in a haircut. And we always, we always, I always tell my staff to do this before we send the plant out because the arrow root it dry out already, so it is not there anymore to to absorb any water or moisture from the air. So it's nice to get in the haircut and make it more presentable. And again, don't forget to feed them, even though it's winter time. But look at this. They're gonna ready the flower from here, and a lot of the time, as I said a lot, couple of weeks ago, the dendrobium had the capacity to rebloom from the old can. So that's why they love to water, and then just do a do a cleaning, okay? And if it's too hard to dry to clean, uh, spray uh, with water, and do a brush and clean them, okay? And this is. This is a good spring cleaning, a fall cleaning. And what about this uh, Formosa type? Okay, Formosa type. Okay, but they this is the type that last. This is Damari hybrid, but this is Jaho Delight. They've been flower all summer, and I also keep them very dry. So. The suitable, all suitable like this, all leave like this. You don't need to use a uh, clipper. Just cut them off. This is the, from the old leaf. By cutting them off, this is actually 
expose the light they are should have it's gonna have flower from here again see the bump here and this is why it's good to remove them okay and this has been in bloom for three months leave it alone uh, I think they're still good and the plant is healthy got a new root coming up if a plant are weak are not strong I would remove all of them but in this case I'm gonna re I'm gonna enjoy the plant for another month minimum maybe this will be last another till e uh, Thanksgiving okay this is one of the nice about this uh, hyper called Jaho Delay okay and this is we uh, top it uh, toponensis hybrid okay and what about nobile type this is dendrovium nobile nobile type is from Himalaya this is the this is the type you need some attention to them any other nobile type dendrovium they need to be separated and uh, this is the time I'm going to they, they have done all their grow and I'm going to do some give them some haircut okay this is dry because I'm going to put all the nobile dendrobium okay nobile type dendrobium is a type they're not evergreen they're, the, they're from Himalaya so and they do need to let, let them dry out and be cold before they flower so this is the type I'm going to put them aside notice that I've been doing this the the moss on the top is been so dry so they actually moss is dead but no water if you water and then I also try you can try to cut back for one month I by the time I put this outside mark out your calendar no feeding okay nothing normal normal so far but you do need to make to make a dry for you okay and put it the uh, I would put it outdoor uh, they can down to 32 degree no problem but to put it in the area that have a drop of temperature at night minimum day and night temperature minimum 15 degree for them to initiate throughout this coming spring so the, this is a nobile type I don't care what kind of hybrid but in this in this case this is a species nobile type uh, alba alba is a is a beautiful uh, species uh, all your nobile dendrobium type start separate them put in the area no water for at least one month even as dry as they're suitable dry out and that's okay that's how the plant know is winter then and then what happened is uh, if it's so dry and cold that the leaf will drop off and they, will, they send the, all the leaf all the energy all the nutrient back to the suitable and can and the can was restored and set all the flower but for the following spring okay so remember no type is the only type of the dendrobium the actually do not water and no feeding for one month minimum one month and you start watering until you see uh, the flower but come showing don't worry uh, when the time comes uh, we will do an assessment on this type of dendrobium okay so this is a very overview so we, and this is the for uh, here's another Jaho delight and this is the this is the one I think is personally for me I think it's too messy okay here it this we trim off all the old leaf and notice that it was so it's so it's the the prey is very taxing they you they've been flowered so long this is a flower this is a flower they use a lot of energy so I'm actually we which, which I cut I pinch up all the flower and this one here there's two ways to do this I'm actually going to cut this off because I'm also going to cut this off okay why am I doing this well is make the print more presentable and this is what we're in horticulture and this is the way take it away from the apocotamin okay so no more oxen 
Apocotamin is the male hormone, normal dominant, normal domination and her male hormone. In turn, they're gonna and they're gonna put more cytokinin. And then next week when we do the mega dry, we actually gonna encourage more not only have a new girl coming up, see the new girl coming up, see the see the shine on leaf, they're happy. Okay. That way I'm setting ready for another set of flower on here for next spring. So this this is one of the trick you can do on dendrobium. If we call it topping. And I know, I, I know if I probably give some people a heart attack when I did it earlier, but that's okay. It's part of the holy uh, we do in horticulture. Remember in chrysanthemum, we disrupt them to get more branching. Do the same thing. So uh, no more upper to diamond. So line up all the energy is gonna be forced onto this grow. And also this grow here. There's a two new leaf here. So I'm this uh, this is the one way for me to guarantee I'm gonna have really two strong grow, grow here. Alright? It makes sense. Okay. <laughs> and there are some uh, the Formosa type. Okay, this is the Formosa type. Uh, Formosa type is a, is a, is a, is a beautiful uh, type. Uh, the species originated from Taiwan. That's where I was, I was born. So I always like the Formosa type. And Formosa type is the type that had the black hair on the can. And the black hair on the can, this is a very durable uh, type of dendrobium. It's very hardy and it can take a lot of sun. Okay, uh, can we do it here? They always fall from the top. And for most of the time, it's very nice in a way. This is, when first people saw, saw this, they thought it's a Cataria. No, it's not. They always from, they never fall from here, by the Jaho uh, Delight, but they always from the tips, so, you see here? This is the one, the case, I would remove this, okay? Even this, because I do that way. I can the most. We more worry about the water might stay in the crown, and they are they are turning yellow anyway. So that way, I open up. I can even open this by by trimming off some of this because there's there's going to be two more flowers from here. There's going to be another set of flowers from here. That way, there's more light coming coming through. And it'll be here, all right. And then they also get into another new grow. And the color, the older leaf and the new leaf is different, and that's okay because this power is going to fall off, drop off later on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it alone because the, even this bottom one is starting to the, uh, thinness and drying off. I can cut this off. That way, that way I can really let this one show. So this is a, a nice type. And dendrobium, Formosa, it, they can flower about so two, two, uh, two months or more. This is tired. And uh, this looks like a possible botrytis. So I do not want botrytis here. So because this is actually been growing outdoor. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually cut them off, and this is still okay. You can put it in the vase. Okay. See, this is possible botrytis. Okay, because it, we had rain yesterday, and okay. So you do not want botrytis to proliferate in your greenhouse, and then you can you can put it up uh, in the vase. Remove from you. Do remove from your growing area. Okay. Put it in the vase. One of these you can use it for cut flower, okay? And the Formosa is the type, very interesting enough. This is the experiment I did over the summer. Oh, kind of fun. On the very top, what I did, I put two in one cakey paste on that. Yes, you can get cakey out of Dendrobium also. So uh, I did this on the tips. So instead of flower coming up on the top, I did the cakey paste on it. So they try, <laughs> this is kind of fun. They're trying to do cakey 
and because they do have five hormone there, they also have trying to have flower. Okay. So this is this is the fun of the uh, the science. You, you can apply uh, two in one cakey paste. Have uh, I think this right here. You can order from online. It's a wonderful tool. It's not just about getting cakey out of phenolopsis on the side. Uh, you can do uh, propagate on dendrovium. Not much on Cataria, okay, but dendrovium for most of the time, for sure. I haven't tried it on the, the, the Australian type dendrovium, but the Formosa type, because they do flower from the tips here. So you know they do have a growing tip here. So right before they set flower, I will put, I think, put KP paste on that. So they, instead of flower, they form to a cakey. But I think because they still had that chemistry of the cytokinin, the female hormone, they're gonna have flower here. So this is gonna be a fun. So I'm, I'm gonna let them flower. I'm gonna enjoy the flower because the root, I can actually remove this. That way you can see them better. That way I can spray it for make it dry. You see here? What up? So I'm gonna let the flower open. Enjoy the flower. The root is too small to break it anyway. So well, I'm gonna put it here so we can all see the development of this plant for the next couple of weeks. Okay? This is fun. Okay, so to summarize, to summarize everything, okay, remember now, then get it shorter. Don't water your plant, do pay attention to your plant. Uh, do some cleaning uh, of the foliage, any of the old foliage. They're gonna fall off. You can actually remove them. In some area, they might be collect water here. So I have to remove them. And do remember the water, the feed them. And there's a question that, oh, if the orchid are in flower, you don't, you don't feed them. Wrong. If especially orchid are in flower, you do need to feed them. Uh, the orchid flower lasts a long time. They consume a lot of energy from the plant. If you don't give it to them, they will not have enough energy to feed the flower for the next season. To, so they might skip a season. Otherwise, they might bring themselves to death. Okay? And then keep an eye on the Fison, prevent the program once a month. But this is also, if you're in the cold area, that Oregon, Pacific Northwest, your winter can be really cold. This is the time to also put Phyton. Okay, Phyton solution. This is copper base. You can use on all, all the orchid except the dendrovium type. Five time application is a copper base will protect for six months. So it's also, it's stronger than five cent. So if you have a history of losing print over the winter, okay, remember the pathogen for the winter, the fungi is different than the one in the summer. And the one in the in the winter are very very uh, especially cold cold day and cold night. Uh, a, a application of five ton twenty seven, a tablespoon per gallon of water, will give you a shield, a colorless. They're not they don't they're not going to give you blue up uh, shin on the leaf for about up to six months depending on you know, how much water, if you go outdoor and have a rain water. So that, that would be a good, especially if you have a lot of orchid, you have a population, uh, then this is a good, uh, good program to have. All right, so this will be complete this week, uh, the January orchid for the winter. And I'm gonna go into a, sh a short uh, show and tell. Yes? Uh, I can do. I can show the heat map right now. Not so power. Okay. Uh. It's okay. Yeah, but but I do not get any commission out of this. But this is actually recommended by our own member, uh, Sunny. Okay. So 
next week I'm going to talk about the winter care for the phalaenopsis and also emphasize on the on the novelty. So I'm actually getting I, this just got arrived today, and I'm going to try this myself. Uh, we have th we have a bottom heating. Okay, so this is actually uh, for novelty. If you want to keep your fan novelty phalaenopsis blooming all summer or winter, uh, get this. Uh, is Sunny have uh, a link for us? It's from Amazon. Okay, and it was on sale. Was on sale. So uh, if you have question, ask uh, Sunny. Sunny can post a link. I think there's this, and also a controller. You can you, see, you can set the dial for the temperature. But I do get this 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 winter, especially you go under light and using Jeff light, and you're gonna have all your novelty fan novels all winter long. Okay, I think Jamie, Jamie, I also get a set for Jamie too. Because Jamie's office have a big window, so it's